Lamb's pulse quickened with the knowledge that his war was about to begin. He called out the data that would guide his first salvo, the target speed, distance and course relative to his own. His second officer fed the details into the submarine's targeting device that electronically relayed the final course to the waiting torpedoes. Lowering the scope to avoid detection, Lemp tamped down his eagerness and let a minute tick by. When he raised the scope again, the big ship was exactly where he expected it to be. He curled his fingers around the upright firing level. Tube one, fire, he barked into the speaking tube and pulled back on the lever. A muffled whoosh sounded through the submarine's hull, signaling to the torpedo and its 600 pounds of high explosives had left the tube on its way to the target. Excerpt from Without Warning by Thomas C. Sagner. This was the SS Athena and this is the good, the bad and the pure evil. So the Athena was built in Glasgow by Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Company, launching her January 28, 1922 and completing her in 1923. She was built for Anchor Donaldson Line and worked the transatlantic route going to Quebec and Montreal for summer and Halifax for the winter. September 1st, 1939, the Athena captained by James Cook headed off from Glasgow to Montreal. On board, there was 1,103 passengers. Now at the time, war was about to break and it wasn't a secret. But Athena still went ahead. At 1 p.m. in Liverpool on September 2nd, it went off. On the 3rd, it was 370 kilometers northwest of Innistrahul, Ireland. This is when it was seen by the German submarine U 30, which was captained by a man named Lemp. At about 4 30 p.m., Lemp claimed the, uh, the Athena was zigzagging and wasn't in the normal shipping routes. He believed it was a troop ship or Q ship or armed merchant cruiser. Basically, he was claiming it was something that would attack. The U-30 stalked Athena and then at 7.30 p.m. Lemp ordered the fire of two torpedoes. One hit port side in her engine room and she started to settle by the stern. Athena sounded for help and many ships came to her aid. These ships rescued 981 passengers and crew from the Athena. The Athena remained afloat for 14 hours, sinking at 10.40 a.m. the next day. Of those on board, which totaled 1,418, 98 passengers and crew died. Many of those killed were in the engine room and the stairwell close by where the torpedo had hit. The British crews were known to put passengers before themselves and were trained in these events. But even after being rescued, danger and death still stalked those of the Athena. Fifty people died on a lifeboat that was crushed by the propeller of a rescue boat called Newt Nelson. What happened was lifeboat 5A tied against lifeboat 12, who was attached to the tanker. Fifteen feet separated 12 from the tanker's propeller. Once 12 was emptied, it was cast adrift and sank. This was towed to the bridge, but an engine order telegraph was given to go ahead. 5A's morning line parted with the tension, and this had the lifeboat pulled into the moving propellers. Think of a rubber band. You stretch it out and it snaps back in. That's basically what happened here, killing the 50 poor souls on board. A second accident happened at about 5 in the morning. Lifeboat 8 capsized in heavy sea, killing 10 people. Three passengers were crushed to death, leaving lifeboats to go onto the Royal Navy destroyer. Other deaths happened with people falling overboard, injuries and exposure. Those who died included US citizens. And this had the Germans really scared and worried that this incident 
would have the U.S. enter the war. It wouldn't be until after the war, at the Nuremberg trials, that the truth came out about the sinking of Athena by the U-boat. The sinking was widely publicized in the English-speaking world. Front pages had the photos of the doomed ship along with the UK's declaration of war. The Grand Admiral, the head guy, was a man named Eric Rieder for the Germans. When he heard of the sinking, he looked into it and was told no U-boat was nearer than 121 kilometers to the sinking area. Believing this to be true, he told the US German Navy had nothing to do with the sinking. But September 27th, the U-30 returned and Lemp went to his admiral named Dunnas and he told Dunnas that he sunk Athena by mistake. This had him sent to Berlin where he had to tell the whole story again to Grand Admiral Rieder. Which Lemp's account, Rieder went to Hitler and he decided this should be kept a secret, citing for political reasons. Reader didn't court-martial Lemp, as he truly believed Lemp did make a mistake. The log of the U-30, which was seen by many, was taken and changed to match the official denials. A month later, in a Nazi party newspaper, an article was published blaming Athena on the UK. They blamed Athena on Churchill and said the sinking, the accusation of it being Germans, was to turn neutral opinion against Germany. Some, though, actually believed the Germans didn't do it. US President Hoover thought it was too clumsy of an act to have been done by the Germans. And it was very clumsy, but it was done by the Germans. And that's why it's more believable that it was possibly a mistake. That Lemp thought it was going to attack and rather than be attacked, he attacked first. Once the Nuremberg trials came about in 1946, it all came out. Dunnas and Reader admitted the U-30 torpedo to Athena and admitted their cover-up. Lemp admitted his mistake. The steps to hide it, like removing items in the log, and having his crew sworn to secrecy. 2017, David Mearns, ocean, uh, oceanographer, found a wreck he believes is the Athena. Although he can't say for sure, looking at its photos, it fits and it's very likely to be the Athena. The British crew of the Athena are commemorated at the Tower Hill Memorial in London and Canadian crew are listed at the Sailors Memorial in Halifax. Do I believe it was an intentional hit? No. Do I believe it was planned? No. I believe that Lemp was in a situation. He's seen something that wasn't what he thought was safe and it was a case of either hit first or be hit and Lemp chose to be to hit first. Um, I think he felt bad about what he did. He openly admitted his, his mistake and once he got back to land, he reported his mistake. The bad in this story is the secrets. It's the lies. It's the cover-up. Um, even with the English-speaking world saying that they know it happens and the Germans still denying it, it, it's that part of the story that just doesn't sit well in history. And only for the Nuremberg trials, it probably would have never came out. It probably would have been secret. Uh, the whole crew were secret. Even Lemp was secret. Um, to protect their, their reputation, to protect the country, to, to protect it all. And I do believe that Lemp didn't mean what happened. But because of his cover-up, they couldn't admit properly what happened to those 98 people. And at least now with the Nuremberg trials, and the whole story came out admitting that U-30 torpedoed the, uh, the Athena, although not intentionally, it was to protect itself, that the 98 souls can be remembered, and the British crew can be remembered, and they can be told the story that they were hit by a U-30 German torpedo. 
And that is the story of the sinking of SS Athena. Hit that like button if you're not subscribed, please get subscribed. And ring the hell out of that bell. Join me next time for the story of a pogrom, a Russian word meaning to wreak havoc or to demolish violently. But historically, it's when non-Jewish people violently attack the Jews in the Russian Empire and other countries. Happening first in 1821, pogroms were organized locally, sometimes with the approval from government and police. They assaulted and murdered Jews and looted their properties. It never stopped, it just evolved. Until then, this is the good, the bad and the pure evil.